Hey guys, this is Elliot the iPad Pro, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Cytoscape. So Cytoscape is an app that was originally created for biologists who want to create graphical networks. But I think the app can also be useful for statisticians or computer scientists because those fields also use graphical networks a lot. So what are graphical networks and why do biologists use them? Well, inside of a cell, you have many small little molecules like DNA or RNA or proteins. And these molecules act like little machines on an assembly line that work together to help the cell do its job. So for instance, here we have one protein that then interacts with some other proteins. And together, these things form a larger, more complicated object. In this case, these proteins form the shell for a virus. But the relationship between all these tiny little moving parts can get really complicated. So what biologists do is they draw little graphical models to help explain how all the proteins interact with one another. So I created Cytoscape as a way for someone in any field to create graphical networks. For most graphing software, you start with code, and then you turn that code into a graph. But I was thinking, what if you went the other way? What if you made it really easy for anybody to create graphs, and then that graph can be turned into code for people who program? Another really cool thing about Cytoscape is that any graph that you create can instantly be turned into a website. For example, here's a graph that I created that shows people what books they should read if they want to get into bioinformatics. So I should let you guys know that I did not write this code from scratch. The first version of Cytoscape is some really great software that came from Trey Eidecker's lab. Then some people at MIT created another version of Cytoscape called Cytoscape JS that made Cytoscape work inside of JavaScript. And then I took that code to create another version of Cytoscape that works inside of Jupyter IO. Open software is a field where people are constantly taking ideas from each other and then building better new software on top of it. All right, well, let me switch over to my MacBook real fast so that I can show you the original version of Cytoscape. All right, now we're on my MacBook and we can check out the original version of Cytoscape. So the original Cytoscape is some really hardy software that allows you to build very large, very complicated graphical networks. For instance, in this application, we see thousands of edges connecting hundreds of different nodes all together. Now this software was made for heavy coders who want to express the graphical networks that they made for other people to see. That said, in some of the latest versions of the software, they've done a lot of work to make the software more interactive. So I definitely recommend checking it out on your MacBook or a Windows computer. The version of Cytoscape that I created is made on a platform called IO. I made IO as a way for people to program in any language on any device. It also has all the bioinformatics software that you need to get started, like Cytoscape or Gene Pattern Notebook or Callisto. But more importantly, it's a place where programmers and non-programmers like biologists can connect. For instance, you do not need to know any programming to use Cytoscape. You can just go to Applications, go to Cytoscape, and then click Welcome to Cytoscape to get started. So when you first open Cytoscape, it might look kind of weird with all this computer code everywhere. But when the application has finished loading, you can click the web button and then all of a sudden you'll see the Cytoscape application. At the top, you'll see the tutorial video that you're watching right now. And then below that, you can actually build your graphical network. Building a network is actually really easy. You just click once to add a node and then you can double click two nodes to create an edge. 
If you want, you can reposition the nodes to a place that looks nice on the screen. Let's say you add a node, but you didn't really want it there. Well, that's no problem. You can just select the node and then click Delete. If you want, you can undo it to bring the node back, but let's actually delete that. You can press Shift and then drag the mouse to select multiple nodes. Let's learn how to change the style of these two nodes. First, we'll change the color. To do that, we can just go to Color, and then we can select the color that we want, which in my case is blue. We can also change the size, and then we can change the shape. For instance, let's make these rhomboids. It's usually important to give other people a little description to let them know what these nodes are about. Using the label, you can tell people what these nodes are. In our case, we're going to just make these nodes some silly eyelashes, though. And finally, these nodes are meant to represent important things in biology or any other field. So most likely, you want to attach some data or meaning to the nodes and edges in your drawing. So for the nodes, let's say we want to create a text variable called part. Now the two nodes that we have selected will be called the eyes. Now when we select some other nodes, we can name those to be a different body part. For instance, we can call these the nodes. If you want to select everything a different way, we can use the search feature. For instance, if we type node, we'll select all of the nodes. Notice that in the data table for nodes, we can see which nodes are eyes and which nodes are the nodes. If we want, we could even change this. For instance, let's say we just wanted to say I instead of eyes. Now, when we select an individual I node, we see it says just I. Now, when you're actually building these graphical networks, these things might get pretty big and pretty confusing. So this search feature is actually super useful. For instance, let's say that we want to select all of the eyes, but we don't want to do it manually by dragging to select them. Well, then in the search feature, we can type node and then brackets. Inside the brackets, we can say the part, since that's what we call the variable, should be equal to the word I. Now, when we run this, we see that we select just the eyes in the data set. The search feature is really great for finding the variables you care about in large data sets. You can click the I button to isolate just the variables that you have selected. If you want to learn more about how to search for variables inside your graphical network, you can click search and that will bring you to a page that really explains the details about how the search function works. All right, so our person has an eye and a nose, so we might as well finish him off by giving him a smile. We can select these nodes and then give them a variable as well. For instance, we'll call their part smile. Just to make it look a little nicer, let's also give our guy a red smile. All right, we now have a pretty good looking graph. And now I think it's time to take it and learn how to save it. So an important thing about Cytoscape is that when you're saving data, it's not about just making a copy of it for later. Saving is about sharing the thing that you create with others. For instance, when we click save, we have two options. We can either save it in Python or into a HTML website. When you save something in Python, you make it so that other programmers can analyze your graphical network. And when you save something into HTML, you can turn it into a website that you can share with the rest of the world. To show how this works, let's take our Mr. Smiley and turn him into a website. So first, we'll just give our graph some title like Mr. Smiley. Then we can give a little bit of text that explains what our graph is about. So for instance, here is Mr. Smiley. 
So when we click Save, we see that everything works. Now, if we go back to I.O., to where the Cytoscape application is, we see a new file called index.html. When we click it, we see that we have Mr. Smiley right here. And we have a little description about him. We also have more than that, though. If we click this button, and then we click one of the nodes, we see it shows the data that we entered for that node. So this is cool. But right now, this is just a file that is running on your computer. How do we actually turn this into a website? Well, remember that Cytoscape is just one application that runs on I.O. Many people have built lots of different applications that all run on I.O. And there's one application called I.O. Online that people use to share their work with others and to turn things into websites. So now we're going to use the application IO Online to load the Mr. Smiley graph that we just made to the rest of the world. When the page has finished loading and you click the web button, you'll see the IO Online application appear. IO Online is a great way to share your work with others. For instance, when we go to the IO Newsroom, we see all the different applications that other people are sharing right now on IO Online. So let's say you want to share Mr. Smiley as a website with others. Well, then the first thing you have to do is set up IO Online, which is actually really easy. All you have to do is sign in using your GitHub account. So if you don't know what GitHub is, it's a really awesome website run by Microsoft. And it's the place where programmers share their work with each other. But the downside of GitHub is that it's a little complicated. Even programmers get confused when using it. I made IO Online so that people who don't know how to program can still access all of the power of GitHub. So, for example, let's say we want to turn Mr. Smiley into a website. Well, first we log into our GitHub account. Now what we're going to do is create a public folder that we're going to share with others. So let's go into public and let's create a new folder. Let's rename this folder Cytoscape underscore example. Now we'll go back to where we created the Mr. Smiley HTML file. We'll select the file and then we'll move it to public slash cytoscape underscore example. So now we see that the Mr. Smiley HTML file that we created is inside of cytoscape example. We can then go to IO online and then we can click Manage Files to go to the place where we share our work. There's a chance that you might have to reload your public folders, but you can do that by just clicking these buttons. Then you'll see that you have the option to add the Cytoscape example. Let's click Add. And that's it. We just shared our Cytoscape website. Now, if you want a little bit of proof to see where it is, let's go to the IO Newsroom and refresh it. We now see that the Cytoscape example that we created is the most recent thing on IO Online. And if we click the web button, it will bring us to the website that we made. Now anyone in the world can see our Mr. Smiley example. If you want to check it out, you can go to this website right here. So IO Online does a lot more than just turning Cytoscape graphs into websites. For instance, I'll constantly be updating Cytoscape with new features and glitch fixes. And if you want to update your version to the most recent, you can do that in IO Online by clicking Update Apps. As you can see, right now all of my applications are up to date though. IO Online even gives you a way to build your own applications that people can use. Another cool feature is that IO Online gives your entire lab a way to communicate with each other. I'll be covering all these really cool features in another video, but you should definitely play around with the IO Online application. Okay, so remember that I said that there are two important things that I wanted to have in Cytoscape. 
I wanted to make it easy for people to share graphs that they make on their computer with the rest of the world. And I wanted to make it easy for people to share the graphs that they create with programmers. But so actually all of Cytoscape is made inside of Jupyter, which is a programmer's dream. So let me give you an example. Let's say a programmer wants to work on the index.html file that you just created. Well, the first thing they would probably do is create a Python notebook next to the index file. Let's rename our Python notebook graph analysis. Okay, now this is where things start to get really cool. So remember that Cytoscape just runs inside of a Jupyter notebook. So this actually means that we can run Cytoscape wherever we want in Jupyter. With one command, we can load in Cytoscape. And then with just one more command, we can launch the application. And we now have Cytoscape running. So now let's say we want to do data analysis on our graph. Well, then the first thing that we do is load it into Cytoscape. In the load section, we can click load HTML and then we can load the index.html. Now we see that we have Mr. Smiley inside our Cytoscape. Okay, now let's turn Mr. Smiley into code. We can actually do that again with the save button in Cytoscape. We will save Mr. Smiley as a pandas data frame which has become the most popular way for doing data science in Python. We can choose the name of the variable where we want to save Mr. Smiley. Let's save it as Smiley. Now we can create a section called Smiley Analysis. And then when we run the variable Smiley, we see a very clean data frame that shows all of the data inside of our graph. So for instance, these IDs are a unique identifier for each node and each edge. When we go to type, we can see that all of these rows are the nodes, and these rows are the edges. Notice that for the nodes, we also have the body part names that we added when we were creating the graph. And you can also see that the eyelashes, which are the labels for our eyes, is also displayed in our data set. Now because this data set is already a data frame in pandas, doing data analysis is super easy. For instance, if we want to create a table of just the nodes, we can do that with just one command. We can do a similar thing to get a table of just the edges. But let's say that you don't really like programming in Python, and instead you really would prefer to program in R. Well, that's also super easy to do. You can type just one command to turn this pandas data frame into a CSV file. Now, when we go back to IO, we see that a smiley.csv file appeared. When we click it, we see that it has all of the data from our graph. Now to do data analysis in R, all you have to do is create a new R notebook and then load in the CSV file. Finally, the last feature I should mention about Cytoscape is that it also gives you a way to take any data frame that you create and then turn it into a Cytoscape graph. When we scroll up to Cytoscape, you'll see that under load, there's an option to load data from a pandas data frame. As an exercise, you can try appending a few rows to the Smiley data frame and then uploading it back into the Cytoscape application. So I hope this video shows just how powerful Cytoscape can be for both data scientists and biologists. So one thing you might be wondering that I totally forgot to mention is how do I install this software? Well, IO is actually super easy to install. I created it so that total beginners can have everything they need to start coding. Also, you can install IO on any device, from Windows to a Fire tablet to even a cell phone. I ran out of time to talk about how to install IO in this video, but what you can do is scroll down 
and then click me to go to my channel. Then a video will start playing that will show you how to install IO. Another thing that I wanted to show but didn't have time for is how I actually created Cytoscape inside of Jupyter. In IO, you can create beautiful source code. And in a later video, I'm going to show you how I coded Cytoscape so that you can then later build your own professional applications. Also, I created IO for fun as something to share with both the biology and computer science community. So if you're a biologist and you use this software to do something really cool, or if you're a programmer and you create a better Cytoscape, then let me know in the comments and I'll show off your work in one of my videos. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe. This is Elliot the iPad Pro. See you guys next video.